Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I want to talk about discovering your spiritual identity. I've got uh, three examples from the scriptures that deal with this topic of identity. And so we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. Uh, starting with Moses chapter 1. And God spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, I am the Lord God Almighty, and endless is my name. For I am without beginning of days or end of years, and is not this endless? And behold, thou art my son, wherefore look, and I will show thee the workmanship of mine hands, but not all, for my works are without end, and also my words, for they never cease. And I have a work for thee, Moses, my son, and thou art in the similitude of mine only begotten, and mine only begotten is and shall be the Savior, for he is full of grace and truth. But there is no God beside me, and all things are present with me, for I know them all. And now behold, this one thing I show unto thee, Moses my son, for thou art in the world, and now I show it unto thee. And it came to pass that when Moses had said these words, Behold, Satan came tempting him, saying, Moses, son of man, worship me. And it came to pass that Moses looked upon Satan and said, Who art thou? For behold, I am a son of God, in the similitude of his only begotten. And where is thy glory, that I should worship thee? For behold, I could not look upon God, except his glory should come upon me, and I were transfigured before him. But I can look upon thee in the natural man. Is it not so, surely? So in these verses, we see that Moses had interactions with two different individuals, one being God and the other being Satan. And we see the contrast between the, those two experiences that he had because uh, Moses had to change to experience God's glory, but he did not have to change to be in Satan's presence. And in verses four, six, and seven, God reminds Moses of his identity. He calls out to him and says, Moses, my son. And of course, Satan referred to him as Moses, son of man. In first Nephi chapter five, I start in verse 14. And it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the place of brass a genealogy of his fathers. Wherefore, he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph, yea, even that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt, and who was preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he might preserve his father Jacob, and all his household from perishing with famine. And they were also led out of captivity and out of the land of Egypt by that same God who had preserved them. And thus my father Lehi did discover the genealogy of his fathers. And Laban also was a descendant of Joseph. Wherefore, he and his fathers had kept the records. And now when my father saw all these things, he was filled with the Spirit and began to prophesy concerning his seed. Wherefore, it was wisdom in the Lord that we should carry them with us as we journeyed into the wilderness towards the land of promise. In these verses, we see that Lehi discovers his divine identity as he searches the brass plates and finds his lineage through Joseph of Egypt. Now that knowledge of his identity gave him and his family the power they needed to press through on their journey to the promised land. Now we have the scriptures to remind us of our spiritual lineage, which will empower us in our journey back to our Heavenly Father and the Savior. So maybe some can relate to this. I usually experience major opposition before or after a spiritual experience, like going to the temple or going to a baptism or right around general conference, any type of special spiritual experience that I'm preparing for it could be even right after in luke 4 we read of an encounter that the savior had with satan while he was fasting and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of god 
Command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Satan taunted Christ and, and mocked his identity. In a devotional address, in 2018, President Henry B. Eyring shared inspiration that he received about his spiritual identity, which applies to all of us. When you realize who you really are, you'll be sorry that you didn't try harder. I invite you to find out your true identity as a child of God. The Savior is coming, and when he does, all shall bow the knee, and every tongue shall confess to him who sits upon the throne. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.